In this video, I'll create an advanced assembly which makes use of spacer components and advanced junction setbacks to create a two course brick wall. I'm starting with two components already made a full brick and a half brick. First, let's see why an assembly of continuous components doesn't work very well here. The full brick component measures 8 by 8 by 16 inches long with its origin at the lower left front corner. I'll start a new assembly, call it brick wall, and add a component called brick. I'll pick it from the model, keep it everywhere along the path, and make the spacing 16 inches exactly. Here's what happens when I draw out this assembly along a turning path. The junctions aren't correct, and it would be rather complex to fix them in this arrangement. A better solution here is to use spacers and spans. A spacer is a dummy component, between which the full brick components will run as spans. My dummy component will be three edges set to resemble a set of axes. So that I can see these edges in color, I'll edit the current style, open Edge Settings, and change Edge Color to By Material. Now I can assign the red, green, and blue colors to the edges. The red edge helps to indicate the direction of the assembly path. I'll make these edges into a component called spacer. I'll also create a layer for these spacers so that they'll be easy to hide later. In a new assembly called brick wall, I'll add this spacer as a component called course one spacer and pick it from the model. As before, the spacing will be 16 inches exactly. I'll draw out the assembly so far with a right and a left turn. For the first course of bricks, I'll add a span, which is a component called Course 1 Bricks. I'll pick the full brick from the model, and its supports are the spacers. When I update, the bricks look fine, except at the junctions. I'll start by placing a half brick at the right junction. This will be a component called Course 1 Right Half Brick, picked from the model. This component will only be at right corners. No offsets are needed and I'll update to see the half brick fill in its corner. The left junction requires a few additional steps. First, I need to go back to the spacer component and enter left junction setbacks to clear this corner. I'll check Use Advanced and enter 8 inches for pre and post left setbacks. Updating creates the necessary spaces at this junction. I'll scroll back to the right half brick and add Course 1 left half brick. This will appear only at left junctions, and I'll remove the left-right offset. Here's how this corner looks after updating. And I can fix this with a simple 90-degree rotation. Now let's work on the second course of bricks. I'll scroll back to the Course 1 Spacer component and add a new component called Course 2 Spacer. I don't need a left-right offset, and I want an 8.5 inch vertical offset to leave a half inch space between the two courses of bricks. I'll want spacing between adjacent bricks as well, which I'll do farther on. I also want to add a start setback of eight inches so that the second course of bricks will be staggered. The junction setbacks will be changed later, but I'll leave them for now. I'll update to see my new spacers. For the full bricks that run between these new spacers, I'll go back to spans, Add a new span of components called Course 2 Bricks and choose the new spacers as the supports. I'll remove the vertical offset and update. The start of the wall looks okay, and I'll fix the rest of the wall later by adding more junction components. The second course needs to start with a half brick. I'll go back to Components, find a half brick from the first course, and add a new component called Course 2 Start Half Brick. This brick will only appear at the start, with a zero left-right offset, eight and a half inch vertical offset, and zero rotation. Now I'll make room at both junctions for corner pieces. Returning to the course two spacers, I want to change the pre and post right setbacks to eight inches to make room for the corner brick that will go here. Both left setbacks need to be increased from eight inches to 16 inches. I'll now create new components to use at both junctions. I'll start with the right, drawing this piece, assigning it a new color for visibility, and making it a component called Course 2 Right Junction. 
An important thing to keep in mind when creating component parts for junctions is that when junction setbacks are zero, only one component will be placed at the junction. Non-zero setbacks result in two components, one at either side of the junction. Because I only want one of these components, I'll set the component axes to meet the point where the junction occurs, which means that no setbacks will be needed. I'll add a new component to the assembly, naming it Course 2 Right Junction, picking it from the model, and placing it only at right junctions. No left-right offset is needed, or setbacks, or junction setbacks. I'll remove the component and update the assembly to replace it within the wall. For the left junction, I'll create a similar corner component named Course 2 Left Junction. Its red axis needs to follow where the path is coming from before turning. The final assembly component will be Course 2 Left Junction, picked from the model, placed at left junctions. No left right offsets are needed. I'll remove this component and update. Now, all that's left to do is to add spacings between adjacent bricks. This can be done in both spans by adding a quarter inch start and end setback. With these spaces, it's now easy to see the spacer components, but I'll use the layer I created to hide them. I'll open the assembly group and place one spacer from each course on this layer. Then I'll find the course one spacer component and repick from the model, and do the same for the second course spacer. I'll close and update the assembly, and now I can turn off the spacers layer to hide them. This brick wall looks nice along paths comprised of straight lines and curves. And if I want to build it up to the height of an actual wall, I can simply make a copy 17 inches up and enter the number of copies that I want. In the next video, I'll demonstrate the Auto Assemble feature.